What we've just been hearing here is just uh, what I like about a committee like this. You're hearing a broad array of uh, viewpoints. Um, I've healthcare has been something I wrestled with long ago um, in the whole spectrum from uh, early childhood through when you're needing to look at how you're going to spend your last years. It's been cloaked behind closed doors. Uh, large insurance companies and hospitals where we spend most of our money on the way to maybe a nursing home, assisted living, or if you're lucky enough to live it out in your own abode, uh, it's got to be swamped with transparency and to where we can see Mrs. Uh, Vessenmeyer's story. How can something like that happen? Uh, and that was in Virginia uh, when we're hearing $3,800 a month in Nebraska. Every state's going to have a different cost of living, a different cost structure. But that idea, Mr. Mollett, of uh, a transparency portal and at least some things that are going to make it easier to shine the light on issues that are out there. To me, when you're against that, you're just trying to hide something. And uh, for instance, on the bigger picture, and this is an interesting combination of individuals, myself, Senator Sanders, Senator Grassley, Senator Smith, Senator Hickenlooper, that's two Republicans, three Democrats. I've been working on this since I've been in the Senate. Competition and transparency if you want to be in the biggest part of our economy, health care, and especially at the tail end of our lives, be out there, be open. Um, Ms. Simpkins, I was wondering, because you've done a good job, and like Senator Fetterman said, your payor is coming through either state, federal governments, and you're aimed at low income. Um, what is your cost, roughly, to do what you're doing? Uh, across those five states? Because we heard 3,800 here. I just asked my staff, so maybe closer to 4,500 in Indiana per month. What are you finding? Uh, you're servicing low-income uh, residents. Uh, what's that cost structure look like? Um, thank you for the question, um, Ranking Member Braun. I'm, I'm trying to, to that would just mean in terms of your, you have a business yes. without giving any trade secrets away, what does it roughly cost in those states to provide a service? Your payor is mostly from government. In the case over here, uh, didn't have that advantage and you saw what happened. And that was in a state like Virginia, which I would have thought would have been maybe moderate on costs. Yep. The, the thing I'm struggling with, it's, um, and I certainly agree with the transparency. Those are things that we're going to be showing all the conversations here today of, of um, you know, the cost of care, making sure there's no hidden fees. The the expense side, the, what I'm struggling with is the expense side really depends on the state in which you're in. And I'd certainly be willing to. Well, let's a, just a pick Indiana then Indi to keep it simple. Indiana. And then what do you charge the governments that end up paying you mostly? I'm, I'm going to get an idea of what the variation is in cost across this country. Okay. And then that whoever's in any component of health care should be always willing to make it easy for us to understand. And on health care that leads up to assisted living or nursing homes, it's terrible. This is a new update on Social Security. Millions of Americans will receive their next benefit payment in just six days. And these payments can be worth as much as $943. But top experts are debating whether Social Security will go bankrupt in nine years and how many Americans could be affected by this. My dear friends, please make sure that you watch until the end of this video. Also, this coming Friday, I will be announcing several winners for the Walmart gift card giveaway. If you would like to enter the weekly giveaway, friends, all you have to do is click and like several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you comment on, friends, the greater your chances of winning these giveaways. According to the Washington Examiner, the first supplemental security income payment of the new year, which was worth up to $943 for individual filers, will go out to recipients in under one week. The payment, which is a first check of 2024, because of a scheduling quirk in the SSA's calendar, 
will be released in six days. On Thursday, February 1st, Social Security is crucial for millions of Americans. A recent survey by Gallup found that 88% of retirees considered Social Security a significant source of their income. Over the past two decades, similar surveys have consistently shown that 80% to 90% of seniors rely on these benefits to cover their expenses. Despite its importance, Social Security is facing financial challenges. According to The Motley Fool, changes include the retirement of baby boomers and declining birth rates, which are putting a strain on the program. The 2023 Trustees Report estimated a funding shortfall of nearly $23 trillion through the year 2097, mainly attributed to these demographic shifts. The Old Age and Survivors Insurance Trust Fund, which is responsible for paying benefits to retirees and survivors, is projected to run out of reserves by 2033. However, this does not mean that Social Security will go bankrupt. Social Security relies on three funding sources, a payroll tax on earned income, taxation of benefits, and interest income from asset reserves. So even if the Old Age and Survivors Insurance Trust Fund are depleted, the payroll tax and taxation of benefits would continue, ensuring a steady income for the program. But the real concern is the sustainability of the current payout schedule. If the OASI's reserves are exhausted, benefit cuts of about 23% may be necessary in the year 2033 to maintain payouts through 2097. The ongoing debate is not about the survival of Social Security, but rather about finding a solution to sustain the current payout schedule, including annual costs of living adjustments. Democrats advocate for reinstating the payroll tax on high earners and changing the inflation measure to benefit retirees. Republicans prefer gradually raising the full retirement age and using a different inflation measure to reduce program costs. But both plans have their benefits. But a middle ground solution is necessary. Combining elements from both proposals could strengthen Social Security and address short-term and long-term challenges. Also, friends, according to Yahoo News, in the upcoming months, there is widespread anticipation from the Federal Reserve will commence a series of interest rate reductions. This would be driven by the gradual approach of inflation towards its long-term target rate of 2%. In the economic forecasts accompanying the previous Fed decision, policymakers hinted at the possibility of up to three quarter percentage point rate cuts within the year. However, the exact commencement date of these reductions remain undisclosed. Fed Chair Jerome Powell, in a post decision press conference, mentioned discussions about the appropriateness of initiating interest rate cuts without delving into specifics. Differing opinions have emerged among analysts and traders regarding the timeline for the Fed's rate setting committee to initiate these cuts. Some believe a move in March is probable, citing a focus on more aggregated measures of inflation. Bank of America economists recently expressed this sentiment, but others, including Wells Fargo chief economist Jay Bryson, cautioned against early expectations. Despite the Fed's mandate to act independently, its decisions will be scrutinized by politicians on both sides of the aisle. The Biden administration hopes that consumer confidence in the U.S. economy, buoyed by potential Fed rate cuts, will favor Democrats, while Republicans anticipate voter dissatisfaction with historical inflation could sway opinions in their favor. So, dear friends, what are your thoughts on the current state of the U.S. economy? Please let me know what your thoughts are in the comments section below. That is the end of my daily stimulus update video for today. Dear friends, thank you very much for being part of this community. I will be announcing several winners this coming Friday for the Walmart gift card giveaway.
If you would like to enter these weekly giveaway friends, all you have to do is click and like several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you comment on friends, the greater your chances of winning these giveaways. Thank you and have a wonderful and very blessed weekend.